Hi, I'm Jay Haynes for the Film Sensei YouTube channel. Today in this video, we are going to do the Avengers Infinity Wars Ash Disintegration Effect. And let me tell you, it's a snap. So this effect will make heavy use of the 3D particle simulator that you can find in HitFilm Pro or you can buy as an add-on for HitFilm Express. But it does not come with the HitFilm Express free version. You have to buy the add-on. So in HitFilm, the first thing you want to do is you want to film your footage and you want to use a green screen to do that so you have a separation between you or the subject that is turning into ash and then the background behind it and you can either set up a green screen right there and then film the background immediately after that way the lighting matches perfectly or you can do what i did in this example which is filmed the footage and then moved the camera to a different location to film the background and did it at the same time of day with the same lighting and all that kind of stuff, roughly facing in the same direction with the camera so that it looks like it matches. Now, there are lots of videos out there on how to do green screen in hit film. And ultimately, you want to key out your footage so that the person or the subject who is turning into ash will turn into ash uh, without having the whole background turn into ash also so the uh you want to key out that transparent footage and then probably do a pre-render on it so that it makes it a lot faster for purposes of this tutorial what i have done is i have created uh an avi with the alpha channel so that way it's easier and simpler for me to to demonstrate the actual tutorial that we're doing. All right. So I'm going to start by creating a new composite shot. And this will be my final shot. And I'm going to make in this particular case, it's 20 seconds. But of course, that will depend on your shot. And a lot of things that you will do will depend on your shot. So I'm going to drag in my transparent footage. And then I'm going to drag in the background to match all right now <clears throat> the actual snapping of the technique happens at the 13 second mark i just happen to know that you will have to figure that out so what i'll do is i'll use my slice tool and i will just slice my transparent footage so really that is only going to happen from 13 seconds on okay and what i will do is is i will actually call this the wipe footage okay so i'm just going to rename that to be the wipe footage and it's just going to move and of course i don't want any sound on it so just for today in this tutorial i'm going to go ahead and mute that sound okay um so here's going to be the deal i do the snap and then boom it immediately starts to wipe away okay that's the bottom line so what i want to do is i want to create a mask that is going to wipe across all right so i'm going to use my freehand mask tool i'm going to zoom out a little bit what i want to do is, is i want to just draw a mask around where the wipe is going to happen here okay and that way i can then custom make that wipe happen all right if i open up and under the shape or no under the transform i keyframe the path i move forward say three seconds or so uh to about the 16 second mark and i just sort of draw these things over and i would go about this very very carefully uh, but for this tutorial i'm just going to do it fairly quickly okay um like this basically so now i have this situation where it wipes across here okay and i would i would exactly how i want it to wipe uh will be you know i would i would very much t dial that in okay as soon as i have done that though and i'm happy with how that wipe is going to occur then what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on that and make it into its own composite shot. And I am going to say, yes, move that with the layer and click OK. All right. Now, I just want to double check and make sure that it is still muted. And it is. 
Okay, so now I have this wiping here, okay? What I want to do is I want to create essentially a leading edge of this wipe where the uh, particles for that create the ash effect will spring forward out of, okay? So what I will do is go back to my media tab, find the wipe composite shot, right click on it and say duplicate, and I'm just going to rename that the edge, okay, edge. And if I open that up, it's the same as the other one, but what I will do is I will open this up and show the mask, and you can see how the mask is just coming across, right? What I wanna do is duplicate that mask by Control D or duplicate, and then change it from an add mask to a subtract mask. So basically I have the same mask, one of them is adding in, and then the other one is immediately subtracting it. But if I open up the subtract shape properties under the expansion, I can draw that expansion in, and you can see how the subtraction is less as a result. So what I'm gonna do is just give myself a leading edge there okay so it starts here and then shh, comes all the way until everything's off the edge just like that basically is what i want okay so i come back into the final i can go ahead and bring my edge in and i'm actually going to put it exactly in the same space as the other one and you can see there's the leading edge of it right there right that's what i want i'm going to bring it to the bottom and hide it and then i'm going to go ahead and bring in my particle simulator so right here and that's it i'm going to bring it in and it will start at that point also and you can see that right now it's basically just hang you know hanging out here and what I want to do is, opening this up under emitters, emitter, under the shape, you can see right now it's a point. So all of those particles are springing out of one point. If I open this up and say spring out of a layer instead, and the layer that I have it spring out of is the edge, okay, then it will go ahead, it will actually spring out of the entire edge uh, composite shot. You can see if I do this, you can see they're all over the place, okay? What I want to do is I want it to only spring out of the edge, which is right there, okay? And how do I get that? Well, I get that by using the layer alpha. So I will check on use layer alpha. And now they will only spring out of the edge, okay, where it is wiping across, okay? So now only the particles are springing out of the edge, but they're just those, you know, regular circle particles. So let's do some work here to make those look a little better. I'm using the page up, by the way, to go back. And if I use page up, it'll go back to the front. If I use page down, it goes forward to the next edge of a uh, of an asset in the composite shot. So the page up and page down are really valuable keys to, to know uh, how they work and what they do, okay? Back in the particle simulator, I am going to open up the particle systems, particle system, and I'm gonna start with appearance. Right now there is no texture source, but if I use a built-in texture source, and it's not gonna be the Aurora Borealis, but instead I'm gonna choose debris rock. Now I could probably use debris dust maybe too, but the debris rock just seems to look an awful lot like, you know, ash flakes, right? Um, but they're awfully big there, aren't they? So what I'm going to do is, is under movement, uh, I wanna go ahead and up the life to about four, four or five seconds. And the scale, I'm gonna take it way down, really tiny, about 200 or 12%. I mean, I'm also gonna make the speed zero. Okay, so that way they're just little tiny particles there, okay? And if I back up and I go under the general prop per, or particles per second and I crank that up to say 15 or 20,000, something really big, then I can get a pretty good idea of whether or not those are going to actually cover everything that I need them to cover. And in this particular shot, that 15,000 number actually does, so that's a pretty good number. Uh, and I'm going to stick with that. Okay. So there you go. Now they're not going anywhere. They're just sort of hanging out. Right. So what I want to do is, is I want them to sort of float away. All right. How am I going to do that? Well, if I come down to the bottom, I can find the forces. I'm one with the force. The force is with me. Effect. 
And if I add a force effect, I'm one with the force, the force is zero. Then I can change that to call it wind. Okay. Now, by definition or by default, a force is a directional force and it's straight down at 25%. So it's like gravity. Okay. And if I play this, you can see right away that it's sort of like a melting sand, eff sand effect here. And if that's sort of what you're looking for, then hey, that's going to really work well for you. Okay. We don't want it to be a melting sand effect. We want it to sort of float away. So backing up, I'm going to make this rotation Z negative 135, which will mean that it will float off and to the right. And I'm going to really knock that thing down. Maybe... 4%, okay? 3, 4, 5%, something like that. It's going to depend on your shot, right? Um, you can have a stronger breeze, right? Or less of a breeze if you want. No breeze, whatever, okay? So now they're just sort of in a straight line, zooming off at that 90 or 45 degree angle up and to the right business there, okay? We want to add a little bit of variation to this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a second force. And that second force I am going to call turbulence. And if I open up the properties of my turbulence force, I'm going to change the type from direction to, you guessed it, turbulence. And I'm going to make the strength about 4% or so. Also, again, it could be anywhere from sort of 3 to 5%. So now we're starting to get the look and feel of those ash particles floating away in sort of a random fashion, right? And that looks pretty nice. It looks pretty good so far. Okay. So now what I want to do is, is I want to maybe add some variation in the movement, right? Just to add a little bit more randomness. So maybe the life, instead of every single particle being four seconds, we'll, we'll put a variation of one second, which means now the life will be somewhere between three and five seconds. The scale, if I add, say, 3% to that, that means now it's anywhere from 9 to 15%, uh, okay? And under speed, maybe if I just add a little bit of movement on those particles to begin with, just, again, random sort of uh, organic feel to it. So they're not so uniform and looking like they were just computer generated, okay? All right, at this point, I want to go ahead and add my lighting into it so that I can add the motion blur. Because if I add motion blur right now uh, and I don't really light it well, then it's not going to look right. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new camera because I can't add a light without a camera. And I'm going to go ahead and turn off the planes. And then I'm going to add a new light. And I'll put the light down below the camera. Now, looking at the shot, you can see the, the, the shadow of my chin. Basically, I think that the light is a little bit off to the our right. And also, I think it's, you know, obviously way high up and obviously it's in front of the camera, you know, or in front of the subject there. So something like that. OK, if I now go ahead and turn on the motion blur for that, this will really slow things down. But you'll get an idea if you look at how this looks. It has a very nice organic uh, sort of real world feel to it, right? That's pretty lovely, okay? There's one more thing I want to do to these particles before uh, we create our second particle sim, and that is I want them to sort of become smaller as they uh, go through their life cycle. So if I go back into the particle simulation and I look at the lifetime properties, you see scale here. If I click on scale and I add a basic constant value over time preset, okay, then basically what that's telling HitFilm is, is at its birth at 0%, I want it to be 100% of its size. But then at, its, at the very end of its life, I'm going to make it zero. So it just sort of gets smaller over time. And I think that that makes it look a little more realistic like those those ashes are sort of disintegrating in front of our eyes. Okay. So now we have this situation where those are, 
you know, just sort of floating away and becoming smaller, all right? Now, you can see, if you watch the movie, you can see that those particles start off when they first separate from the subject as the color of the subject, but then they sort of turn into gray. So I have set this up to look like the uh, particles are, are the same color as the subject, okay? But I want them to sort of turn gray, and you can't really do that even using this lifetime color thing because the lifetime color thing doesn't allow it to go from its particle to a different color, okay? So what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to lay over an identical particle sim that is essentially exactly the same as this one, except, except that it is uh, gray in color. And then I'm just going to fade this one out earlier so that they appear to turn gray. I hope that makes sense, okay? Before I do that, I do want to do one thing, and that is I'm going to turn off the particle sim. I'm going to go to, in fact, I'm going to turn off everything. I'm going to go to 16% or 16... Um, uh, seconds. Okay. Because at 16 seconds, the wipe is complete, right? Uh, and then what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to go ahead and deactivate the particle sim at that point. Okay. Now it's, it's trying to find itself, but this will help tremendously in the render process so that it won't take forever, right? To render because it's still looking for whether it should be doing particles or not. Okay. So if I go into the control setting, uh, of the particle sim and I go to active I'm gonna go ahead and keyframe the active okay then I'm gonna step forward one frame and I'm going to deactivate it so I have made a keyframe to be active if I then move forward one frame and then I just turn off the active then it will no longer uh, actually be producing the particles at that point, which it just makes the render time a lot faster. So I'm going to now rename the particle sim, the colored particles, and then I'm going to right click on it and duplicate it. And the second one I will drag underneath and I'm going to call that ash. Okay. And if I turn off the colored particles for a second, the ash is identical to the colored particles. Okay. But if I open it up, and under emitters, emitter, and particle system, particle systems, appearance, actually no, under shape, uh, it says use the layer color. If I untick that, then you can see that now they're all white. Now the question is, why are they all white? Well, the answer is because I have under the appearance set the color to be white. So if I click on this and make it a little more like gray, now, when I go ahead and run this, you can see they're sort of gray, but otherwise they're exactly the same as the other ones. Okay. So what I want to do now is just have the other ones fade out. So I'm going to turn back on the other ones and I am going to open up under the particle system here and I'm going to take the lifetime properties. Now, remember, we've already adjusted the scale, but now I want to adjust the alpha of that okay and i'm going to create a gradient where it starts off at 100 percent trans or 100 percent visible not transparent at all then i'm going to create a second one and uh, maybe 25 percent into the life which would be roughly around a second i'm just going to have the transparency fade to zero so that it will be completely invisible within that for a second or so okay so now what you'll notice is if i run a little bit of a ram preview is that they start off the color of the subject okay but then as that first second goes by and you can see that it's about you know it, it'll be a full, all the way until about 14 so it's going to take a little bit to get there but if you watch that you'll see that they start turning gray. They're not really turning gray. They're the color versions are just fading out over that time frame, exposing the gray colored ones that are in there behind that. And that's how you get that sort of 
color to ash gray look going on there. So pretty much in a nutshell, that's how you do this effect. So if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. Otherwise, thanks for watching.